Hey guys, it is Field Trip Friday. I know it's been a long time since we've had a Field Trip Friday or Free Tip Friday, but I've been uh, corresponding with through a friend and connected with a local artist here. And let's introduce, let's introduce him. Say hello, Nathan. Oh wait, that's not actually him. That's just some of his work. Maybe Alex Steele will get a kick out of this. But uh, Nathan Scott is a bronze sculptor, as you can clearly see. And I am just pumped to learn how the heck do you make sculptures out of bronze? Because, wow, that's some serious, serious work right there. All right, so let's go meet the artist. Here's the man himself. Hey folks, how you doing? This, this oh, is Nathan you. Scott. And uh, so this is uh, for the city of Greenwood. It's the small city in Canada, and uh, they were famous in the, tw uh, well, the turn of the century for uh, for hard rock gold mining yeah. and copper. And so this one is finished. We're just ready to install it here. We'll be uh, taking it to their city within about two weeks from now. So you got the turn of the century helmet, the lamps, and all that. The hard rock pick and uh, every man needs to have a vice, eh? So there you pipe. go. Yeah, got the pipe in the pocket. That's awesome. There you go. And these are an old style of, um, of I guess, um, rubber boots. They're more of like a galosh where the guys could pull it up um, high up onto their legs. Yeah. And then when they didn't need it so high, they'd Almost roll like it back down. like a fireman down. boot or whatever. Yeah, like, yeah, an yeah, old yeah, style, yeah, eh? Style. We're going to do a little shop tour, guys. Nathan's going to take us inside and kind of show us I'll the process with... of how the heck you take uh, just raw materials and turn it into something like this. There we go. Okay, come on inside here. So, this is a hockey rep. Ready to drop the puck. Yeah, so this is um, one of my latest sculptures. You'll see how a bit of a mess it is. The arms are falling off. The head is a bit loose and all that. It's just because we finished making the molds off of this. We pulled oh, the molds okay. off. And we are starting the wax process. So this is the uh, how the sculpture starts. Um, this is called uh, the face off, and it's for Red Deer, Alberta. And they have a brand new arena that's just uh, going into place. And uh, this is going to be for the uh, Canada 2019 Winter Olympics. So this is uh, called again the face off, and this referee is dropping it off. This overzealous referee is dropping it off to two little Timbits, little hockey players. Oh, yeah. And uh, so those are the parts that you see right there. This clay is a wax-based clay. It's a clay that never dries out. So I have about 2,000 pounds of it. So I've got these sculptures going. You can see Sir Robert Gordon in the background right here, our eighth prime minister of Canada. He's the, uh, the man on the $100 bill. Exactly. The Canadian dollar. Right. So dollar. he's our World War I <laughs> prime minister. There's a horse in the back and there's some other people. So they got clay and sculptures all over the place and different, uh, different processes in that. This little beauty oh, here. Yes. Isn't that a piece of art? That's a 1950, 1953 650 Thunderbird Triumph. And uh, so here, as an artist, you have to do funky little things. So there's my little... Uh, Gas cap? Well, there's my little uh, Thunderbird skull. Nice. And so that covers up that right there. Oh, so I'll take you downstairs and I'll show you the wax. And the guys are starting to do the wax sculptures right now. All right, great. So this is uh, the wax room right here. This is where, um, so we've done the sculpture upstairs. So we've made the molds. So this is old. You haven't seen this yet. This is polyurethane rubber. So this is a little tin bit, one of the hockey players that the referee, you can see the, the negative of the positive right there. And so what we do is it's a brushable rubber. It's uh, very flexible. So what we need to do is make a fiberglass mother mold. So you can see that these are panels. Fiberglass doesn't flex. So this panel comes out this way, this way, this way. And they're all bolted together. When we put it all back together again, what we have is a nice, we have a nice rigid mold right here. So this is uh, going to capture all the details, and this is going to, we are going to be, what we've done in clay, I'm going to be recasting now in a casting wax. This wax right here, it's, uh, I just use an old uh, roasting oven in that, 
and this is uh, wax is uh, about 220 degrees right now. And what we do is we pour it and brush it into the molds. And uh, we'll do a very thin uh, thin layer to capture the detail on that. And then from there, we're going to let that cool. And then we're going to keep building it up. And every time it cools, we get another little bit at a time. What we want to do is get it about 3 sixteenths of a quarter, or a quarter inch thick through the whole thing, being consistent. And then from there, that's just the one side. And on the other, there's a mold on the other side of the room that is the other side. So what we're going to do is when it's all in wax, we're going to trim it clean with the edge of the mold right here. And all of these little things that you see, these positive and negatives, we're going to take the other side in there and it's going to line up real nice. So our mold doesn't shift or anything like that. And so we get a nice seamless effect. So this is the front half. We have another back half. And then we also have arms too, instead of trying to cast the arms. So there's a, there's an arm with a piece of the hockey stick in that, eh? So uh, different colors of rubber, it doesn't really matter what color it is. It's just for mixing and making sure we know what coat we're on. Because the rubber, what we're doing is two to three different coats of rubber, and we want to make sure that we're consistent all the way across in that way. Okay, so let me get this straight. So you, you make the clay mold. Yep, the clay sculpture. The clay sculpture. We're making a mold of the polyurethane And then you rubber. put rubber over top of that. Of the, of the clay upstairs. Like and then you saw. peel it off and it's all flexible. Yes. Or do you, so how do you make sure it stays kind of in the same Okay, so what we shape. did is we rubberized it first, and then when the rubber was still on the sculpture, we fiberglassed then, all around oh, okay, it. So, you fiberglass, so it's in yeah. a case sculpture. And so the mold will look like this. Take a look right around on the side right here. There's that mold right there, little guy. There's the hockey And so player. there it is in its entirety right there. So with this mold now, what you see right here, we have pulled it apart. Yeah. So we have the front and the back, okay? And then from there, this is where we're gonna be doing our casting wax. So come over and take a look right here. Freddie is gonna be pulling out right on this one here. So this is, we've already cast it in wax, it's cooled, and now we're pulling the mold off of it right here. So there's that piece, we'll take that and we'll put it back in the fiberglass. Why don't you take that right out, Fred? That's the arm with the yeah, hockey glove and exactly. part of the stick there. This is just one of the pieces here. And that's hollow. Okay. That's right, so all bronzes so are hollow. It's still pretty fragile then? Or? It can be, it can be. So, whoops. It's sticking to the inside. So again, the your wax, you only want to be making it at uh, 3 sixteenths to a quarter inch thick all the way through. So bronzes again are hollow. The thickness of the wax will depict how thick the bronze is. If it just came out all easy, I'd be kind of pissed off. Yeah. I'm always, oh, here we go. I'm always swearing and fighting with my work. <laughs> so there you go. There's that piece, and then yeah. Look at that. So it's going to get all the undercuts and all those different things. And then you do do a lot of just fine tuning and with yep. by hand and yeah, it's going to be heat oops. gun and kind of finish well, we use um, texturize it or do you do that after the bronze is so, cast? Okay, well, okay, so here this is you see the line right there. That is the line of the mold, the front and the back right there. Yeah. So we are going to clean that up. There's a little bit of uh, we'll just chip it. We'll clean it up and then uh, we'll clean up the flashing. I guess this is what you would call that. And there are some air bubbles in here. We'll use a tool. We'll just grab this and we'll clean this up right here clean that up and then if there's any uh, anything that didn't turn out well in the mold and it should usually then we'll just finish that up there and then what we'll do is we'll retexture the area if I make it too flat we'll just retexture it and uh, you won't be able to see the line it's a lot easier to work right now in wax than it is in bronze eh? yeah yeah so then this piece here once it's all cleaned up we'll take a knife the hockey stick nice and smooth and all that and then from there what we're going to do is um, we'll check it all clean it all up and then we're going to sprue the piece the sprueing is something different and I'm going to show you that on a smaller piece that we've already done and it's not even to do with the hockey player it's got to do with little otters so okay cool. there we go. so uh, we ended off just in the other room there with the uh, uh, producing waxes we saw the arm of the little hockey player in that so this is uh, something else this is called sprueing after the pieces are done so these are little otters that I make People are like a little cash and grabs and they, for people traveling here to uh, Victoria. And so these are uh, just four little otters. Instead of casting one at a time, what we do is we put them on a sprue. So we, this is a little tricky, but I hope you catch on with this here. What we need to be able to do, everything that we do in wax will become bronze. So what we need to do, produce is a pouring cup. So with a pouring cup, the bronze is going to go into this cup, down this sprue here, and individually into each piece here. 
This is going to be totally encased in ceramic. I'm going to show you that in, uh, in a minute there too. Um, but when you're putting into an enclosed section, you need to have the air to be able to escape. If you had air come back up the sprue again, it'd be 2,000 degrees with air bubbling in through there, and it wouldn't be a lot of fun. So what we do is these little air vents right here. So the bronze goes into this piece, and as it's going in, it's forcing the air back out again up to the top. We're not pouring through the air vents. We're just going to be pouring down at the bottom of the cup into here. So when this is done, this is what it looks like. And every, um, every casting is different. Every sprue job is different because we're looking to do big pieces or small pieces. Yeah. With this here done, what we do, need to do after this is make a ceramic mold over this. And that's dipping into this machine of liquid, uh, letting it drip, and then putting silica sand over top of it. Uh, uh, two coats of um, very fine, and then we're doing two coats of medium, and then we're building it up coarse-wise. So that it looks like this. So that is what it would look like. These are, this is another sculpture of two little otters together, so don't get too confused here. But when we, um, so that is done over the wax casting here. And once we've got the wax casting and the ceramic shell done, we need to get the wax out. So we do, we put it in this burnout furnace right over here. And that big nasty uh, tank right there, that gets up to about 1800 degrees. We get that cooking, we put uh, the, the, uh, the wax and the ceramic inside there. And the, uh, the ceramic, the heat, it penetrates through the uh, the ceramic and melts out the uh, the wax. So then you have an pours out the bottom. Exactly. So this is called the lost wax process right here, right? Okay. So what we have is the burnt out ceramic. So this being the positive, yeah. this is now the negative. So wherever where, wherever the wax was, it has now been totally burnt out. So now we pour into this and the bronze will go into these uh, otters and that stuff. So once we've cast it, that's where the air, the air will come air back up there. through there again. Here is one that has been cast with bronze right here. So again, there's a ceramic shell there. There's the bronze, it's all cooled down. So I'm gonna break this off for you here. I'll just bring it over here. And this is a, just a ceramic pile that just builds up after a while. Oh, that one didn't work out either. So you can see right from here that there's the little uh, the little otters right there. So everything that we saw in bronze, the uh, the the sprue bar going yeah. into the pieces and that, and the air vents, it doesn't always come out, but I don't care. We'll nick those off. We'll cut these little otters off, and then we'll sand uh, we'll uh, sandblast them down, and we'll get them ready for patina. This is the crucible. Here's the old furnace right here. This is from the 1950s, and it works just fine. This is a size 30 crucible right here and it will carry 90 to 100 pounds worth of bronze for me. So once uh, the ceramic molds have been burnt out with wax, what we do is we bring them over to a sandbox, and this is the, uh, whoops, this is the old sandbox right here, and we'll put the pieces in the sandbox, uh, stand them up so the cups are up, yeah. and then what we'll do is when the uh, bronze is ready to pour, we'll line all these molds up here and we'll pour, pour all our pieces right here. So, so that's sort of the process. Now, if my ceramics break and while I'm pouring my bronze, I have to go all the way back to the wax again. Yeah. Back to the molds, reproduce the wax, do the ceramic mold, burn them out, and then do it. So sometimes uh, on certain pieces, that'll be two weeks behind. Yeah. So you really do want to try to do things well what's, and do it. What's like a like kind of an average failure rate? Like of all those otters, you know, like do they all, do you, do they work Do, out like 90% of the time, or is it 75%? You, you know, not, I think, you know, we're trying to get about 95%. There's always something that can go wrong. And that uh, our ceramics, we really try to work with those and make a really good ceramic mold because if it, they break with the bronze being poured into it, what a gong show. So we do, we, you really have to really control your heat. You really want to pay, pour at about 9,000, 1,950 degrees. And if you can get like that, when you pour it in, it cools within a couple seconds. And that's really important. If it just stays there hot and hot and hot, then things start really going funky on you in that. So you really do want to be able to pour it down, boom, it knocks off. Uh, you want to get them cool as possible, as evenly as possible, and then from there you can knock the shell off and then get onto the program. So to do a whole process from a wax, just from the wax to here, is about two, two and a half weeks of farting around, waiting for the ceramic, uh, the ceramic mold to shell. I mean to dry the ceramic shell. You know you're dipping it maybe uh, this one here. You're dipping it 12 times. The smaller ones you're maybe doing uh, seven to eight times, and so it's like you're watching paint dry. Yeah, just how it is. So. 
you've got all these different steps, processes going on all at the same time, and you're just trying to keep things moving and kicking the ball and keep everything going all at the same time. So. A lot of patience. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We don't we don't pour every day. We just pour uh, probably once a week, and we'll probably pour four or five hundred pounds a week. And uh, so we build up to that pour, and then boom. The casting of bronze is the um, out of all the processes, it's the fastest part. It's the funnest part, I guess. We could all burn up and die, um, but it's it's the one that is the most exciting to watch. Uh, so how did you get into this? Okay, uh, the abridged, ver like the, the short version, I'm sure it's all very long. Well, I, I guess I've always been artistic. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, as a kid, I always be doodling and all that. Uh, when I got to grade eight, uh, grade eight art, I dropped out. I never wanted to be a flaky artist on welfare. That was a whole perception of artists. I'm just going, this is, I can't make a living doing this. So I, uh, very, I was very mechanical too. I got into uh, automotive, did very well in the automotive program. I went into aircraft engineering and then ultimately into gold mining and that. Um, I spent 10 years in the Yukon, had to get out of that lifestyle. Yeah. It's, I, I loved the job. I just hated it. Well, I was very good at the lifestyle too. I was just <laughs> drugs and alcohol and I just, I was really good at it. So I had to get out of there with my life. I came back down and I started sculpting. I mean, I started uh, painting murals with a friend of mine. And um, it's, it's two dimensional, but I'm colorblind. And it just didn't work out too much for me in that. But there was a couple of jobs that we did that were uh, sculptural. And it was doing a mascot or doing a little project for here or there. And it just came so naturally, it's an absolute gift. Like I can't take credit for it. I didn't know I could sculpt. I just suddenly, this is incredible, I can't believe it. But you know, a lot of it is like uh, doing doodling. It's black and white. And when it comes to clay, remember this clay is only one color and that's all it is. But if I can add depth to it or create shadow and light to it, then it becomes three dimensional. Right? Yeah. And so it was such a natural thing for me. I just went, this is awesome. And so, uh, yeah, the first sculpture I did was a little gardener, four and a half foot. We come from the city of gardens. I didn't want to do any cherubs or gargoyles. I wanted to do a cute little guy trimming little uh, bushes. He's, he's, the guy, he's the guy up in yeah, the front he's yard there. He's up in the yeah, house We there. saw him first. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, somebody forced me because I couldn't sell myself for it. Uh, and so um, the guy said, uh, forced me to put uh, the sculptures in the show. I sold nine of them in the first show alone. And wow. I just, well, I, I was so you were just doing them for yourself? Well, no, I wanted to start drawing, I wanted to start doing something. When you think I knew how to sell myself or anything like that? Yeah. So I had to come up with one piece. I can say, oh, sure, I can sculpt. But if I don't come up with anything, it don't mean, it don't mean beans, right? So I produced this little sculpture. I want to do something for the gardens. Everybody spends a lot of money on their gardens here. So I did the little gardener, and then I did another little piece, another little piece. Uh, within six months of producing my first sculpture, I got my, uh, my first public commission for Sydney. And I think they have nine or eight or nine of my sculptures now. And that was only in concrete, so that was, a, that, was a, that was a long time ago. I think I have about 30 somewhat public sculptures all over Canada now. So I am very blessed to be able to do this, and uh, wow. So then eight years uh, ago, I started, because I've got this industrial background, I've been doing sculpting for the last 12 years. And then so I, I've been doing foundry, I mean, I've been doing uh, bronze work, but another foundry doing it. And I'm just going, I can do that too, just from my background up north. Yeah. So I started my own foundry about not eight years ago. And uh, wow, so I think I'm only, uh, I think there's only two or three uh, artists in uh, Canada that have their own foundries. And uh, so I'm one of them. And yeah. I get to uh, produce my own stuff. And I also get to uh, help other people, other artists too, and facilitate them and uh, cast for them too. I get to charge them. Um, but I am able to walk them through and all that. So it's a neat, and to be able to encourage them to be able to uh, get out of clay and get into bronze. Bronze yeah. is forever, 10,000 year warranty. Yeah. It's, it's beautiful. And I worked out. You did so. Spock? Yeah, I did Spock for uh, for Vulcan there. I, I'm not too much of a um, Star Wars a Trekkie guy there, so they said, hey, we'd like you to do a sculpture of Leonard Nimoy. And so I didn't have a clue who he was. And they're going, well, we want, you want him to look like Spock. What? So there you go. So I got to meet Leonard Nimoy. There he is unveiling the piece. And uh, this is just a bus for Vulcan, Alberta. How oh, awesome. So, uh, wow, that's a beautiful piece. I hate feathers. Once you start one, you gotta do them all, right? Yeah. I'll never do it again. Pretty repetitive. Oh, man. That's a soul killer. Get a lot of birds coming to that feeder? <laughs> I wonder why. Nothing's coming there, right? All right, well, thank you so much, Nathan. Yeah, a lot of fun. Appreciate eh? that. Yeah, so much good you. information. Good conversation last night. You obviously uh, know, what you're, uh, know what you're doing. Well, and uh, hopefully we can come back and visit. Yes, yeah, so we'll come back when the, uh, the when sculpture's the... in uh, bronze. Get and that. You can see the whole process. I mean, the, just the. 
the, the size of it and that and that all being put together. So Great. Be good. So, awesome. Thanks so much, guys. I don't know about you, but that shop tour just got me so pumped about making stuff. And I really want to try bronze casting. I think everybody would agree that we need to make a bust of the samurai carpenter. Come on. Make a pretty handsome bust. You know? You, know? you feel it? Anyways, please give a shout out and a big thanks to Nathan for letting us into his shop. We're going to go back and visit, get more information because there's so much more to it, especially these big sculptures. He casts them in different pieces and then welds them back together. It's this crazy process. I want to learn so much more. I'm sure you guys do too. So be sure to leave a comment, any kind of questions or stuff you want to know for the next time. I can ask him and get you more information, okay? So if you enjoyed this video, you got some good information out of it, please hit that like button, share it with a friend. Be sure to follow me on Instagram because you'll actually kind of get a sneak peek at like what I'm working on right now so you don't have to always wait for videos. You can get little picture updates. So give me a follow on Instagram at the Samurai Carpenter, okay? And now that I'm all just jazzed up on making stuff, I'm going to get back to work on my dining room table because it's flipping amazing. You're going you're gonna to love the video, hopefully out next week, okay? Until then. Samurai out.